This is a 1000 watt drone motor. It weighs just 40 grams. And this is a 1000 watt e-bike motor. It weighs six kilograms. But is it possible to drive an e-bike with a motor this small? This video is sponsored by Onshape. More on them later. Now, when I say these are both 1000 watt motors, I'm using the data provided by the motor manufacturers. So to be precise, the drone motor is rated to 928 watts and the e-bike motor is probably rounded to the nearest kilowatt. But there's more to the specification than just the power. For example, this tractor has the same horsepower as a Nissan GTR, but the Nissan has a top speed of 195 miles per hour and the tractor can barely reach 25. And this is very similar to the motors we are comparing. The e-bike has a top speed of 28 miles per hour and has a wheel diameter of 26 inches. This means that at top speed, the e-bike motor spins at about 360 RPM, but the drone motor can spin up to nearly 30,000 RPM. This causes a bit of an issue because if we were to spin a 26 inch bike wheel at 30,000 RPM, the bike would be going faster than the SR71 Blackbird. So we need to gear it down a little to spin the wheel at a more reasonable speed. An 11 tooth bike sprocket has a diameter of roughly 5 centimeters, and to get a ratio of 80 to 1, which is what we roughly need to convert the 30,000 RPM down to 360 RPM, means we would need a rear sprocket with a diameter of roughly 4 meters, which obviously isn't possible. But instead we can use a series of belts and pulleys to bring the RPM down on the motor side before attaching the chain. For this specific application I'm going to use a 4 to 1 pulley ratio straight off of the motor and then another 4 to 1 ratio to the output shaft. This means the output sprocket will spin just under 2000 RPM and because my previous supercapacitor bike project required a large rear sprocket too, when combined with the pulleys we should have a final wheel RPM of around 360 which matches the e-bike perfectly. So let's start designing these pulleys using Onshape which is a cloud native CAD system. If you're familiar with using CAD softwares already, Onshape is very intuitive to use, with its labelled tool menu and clear parts list, and also includes industry leading manufacturing specific features for sheet metal, frame based design, configurations and detailed drawings. But unlike many other CAD softwares, Onshape works in a browser and is accessible across all operating systems, as well as iOS or Android devices. And because it's cloud based, you no longer need an expensive computer to run it. And all your work is backed up on the cloud, so you won't lose anything if your computer freezes or crashes. It also allows you to collaborate with teammates or vendors on the same project at the same time. Which is why engineering teams at companies like Formlabs, DHL and Trek choose to use Onshape. And if your company uses a CAD system, I highly recommend you try Onshape at onshape.pro forward slash Tom Stanton, or click the link in the description down below. The next step is to make the mounting plate for the motor and pulleys, which I cut from aluminium on my CNC router. This could then be clamped to the bike frame using a couple of 3D printed brackets, and we can then start mounting the components. Starting with the output pulley, which I've attached a sprocket to using a few bolts. This can then be attached to the main mount with the shoulder bolt, which is essentially a precision shaft bolt that the bearings will spin on. I can then fit the bike chain and tension it accordingly by sliding the mount along the frame. So with the belt fitted, the centre pulley can then be attached in a very similar way and can be tensioned using a small idler bearing in this slot. And finally, we can mount the drone motor and see how well it turns. How does that look? <laughs> with the hardware complete, it's time to fit the electronics that will power the motor as well as a small Arduino board to convert the analog throttle signal into a digital signal that the drone motor controller is designed for. Perfect man, look how good wiring that is. Right, here we go. Ooh. Ooh. It's going the wrong way. It's going the wrong way. <laughs> that has some power though. <laughs> that has some power though. Like I can feel the wheel, like there's some torque in there. First test. Hey, look at that. Oh, it's moaning. Oh, 
Oh, the chain's coming off. Just look at it. It's ridiculous how small that little motor is. It's so baby. Oh no. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, oh, oh no. That motor is bloody boiling. I can smell it. <laughs> Doesn't smell good. I think we need a slightly bigger motor. Oh, yeah, that is, yep. You cook an egg on that. It smells, it smells really bad, doesn't it? <laughs> so we obviously need a new motor with some more torque, but also one that will fit the current motor mount. So I found this motor, which is also designed for drones, and it's only slightly larger than the previous motor. However, the difference is that it only spins to 15,000 RPM instead of 30,000 RPM. In theory, with half the amount of max RPM, the motor should output double the amount of torque for the same power. Now, I say in theory because the 1000 watt ratings on these motors are actually for the electrical power and not the actual physical output power. So the only way to find out is to give it a test. I also moved the motor and pulleys to a different part of the bike to shorten the chain as well as stopping it from rubbing on the frame, which should hopefully reduce the chance of it coming off. It's played you. Oh. I think that's quite a bit more power now. Let's see how this goes. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Oh, just go for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's got even more speed than that. Really? That's still not full speed, but the problem is the chain's... I need to tighten the chain. Let's have a look. It's really loose. Because the chain's so loose, it hits this pulley. You see there? It hits the pulley, so it's actually like worn... If you look at the belt here, it's like worn like there. Oh, you can see it just... Focus on it. Yeah, there. so it's... I obviously didn't design it to be mounted here. You need one of those like little ch little bobbins there. Yeah, hold it up. Just sit up there like that. I reckon tension the chain a bit more though. Yeah, will be all right for another run. <laughs> it goes. That was top speed. That was. It looked quick. It was, uh, my watch was saying just over 20 miles an hour. Really? It's pretty good. That is really good, just for a little baby. Do you want to have a go? <laughs> Maybe. Is it warm? Is it warm? Uh, yeah, I just about can hold it. Yeah. Probably about 40 or 50 degrees, or 50 degrees or so. Yeah, I mean, that's still safe temperature for a motor. You want to have a go? Yeah, right. Pedal to get going? Uh, you can use the motor, you don't have to pedal. Just do a little bit. Oh, this is crazy. That's fantastic. It's all right, isn't it? Loads more torque than I expected. <laughs> I thought it would take you ages to get up to speed, but it just it shoots straight off. That's actually really impressive. Is it hot? Oh yeah, that, that's warm now. Is it really hot? Uh, it's, it's pretty warm. Don't grab it like I did. Yeah. So would you uh, ever buy a drone powered e-bike? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm sure you're all wondering, how does this compare to the e-bike motor? Well, let's see with the drag race. Oh, 
Ooh, that's really hot. Ow. Oh wait, I've, I think I might have melted the coils. <laughs> yeah, that's the absolute limit of that motor. And the hub motor is, feels cold. Same temperature as the bike frame. Absolutely freezing. So to answer the question, yes, you can power an e-bike with a tiny drone motor, but would I recommend it? Probably not. Thanks for watching.